When Nintendo released mini consoles for the NES and Super Nintendo one year apart, most people just kind of expected that it was going to be an annual thing and that a 64 would be next, but then it just kind of sort of never happened, at least not at the time of this recording anyway. But while I'm absolutely going to get my dirty ass hands on one of these the day they become available, I'll honestly be content if it never happens, because quite frankly, I just don't think it could possibly be as good as it should be, at least not to the point where it replaced my original 64 collection anyway. So sit back in your sauciest chair or whatever, and I'll tell you why I'm not fiending for an N64 Classic Edition, at least not quite as much as everyone else is anyway. So before I start Desert Storm 2 in the comments section, let me make it abundantly clear that an N64 Classic Edition would indeed be cool, and again, I'd definitely buy one faster than I could win a baby-making scrimmage. All I'm saying is that I just can't see any scenario where Nintendo would make it as good as the first two Classic Editions is all. Like, to me, the main appeal of a Classic Edition console isn't necessarily to be a fun little collectible like the Mario Bros. 35th Anniversary Game & Watch, but rather it's mainly to give us an option of replacing our original hardware. Don't get me wrong, I'll always appreciate looking at a good video game collection, but unless you're some kind of a trillionaire like the Microsoft owner Bill Gates, then collecting retro games isn't necessarily always practical. I mean, not only are they expensive as frig, but you also gotta find a place to store them all. And I know every collector's got their own goals, but for me personally, I've never been the type who's interested in owning everything ever just for the hell of it. Cause first of all, that's not even possible and you're always just gonna want more, and secondly, collecting clutter just doesn't sound very fun to me. If you enjoy the thrill of the hunt, then more power to you, but I've always just personally wanted to collect every game that's at least decent and that I can legitimately see myself actually playing someday, with the plan being to eventually play them all when I'm a dusty old nan with an artificial butt. While I've never had a collection worthy of dedicating an entire YouTube video towards or anything like that, I still think I had a pretty respectable collection going for myself at one point. But then the NES Classic Edition came out, and I did not manage to get a hold of one. But then a year later, the Super Nintendo Classic Edition came out, with the NES Mini getting a second run shortly afterwards, which I actually managed to get a hold of this time around, along with a Golden Famicom Mini that I got while I was in Japan for, like, dirt cheap somehow. And then after playing these things for, like, five minutes, I realized they were the bomb.gov. In fact, I honestly liked playing games on these more than I did on the actual OG hardware. Because not only was it just more convenient to use save states instead of passwords and HDMI cables instead of keeping a dusty-ass CTR TV around, but after I may or may not have illegally added every notable game that I'd ever considered playing, that meant that I'd never have to take money out of my stepdad's college fund again just to be able to afford games that I might never even glance at. And sure, I know I could just use emulators on my computer or get a Raspberry Pi, but at the risk of starting Vietnam 2 The Wrath of Khan in the comments section on top of Desert Storm 2, I just don't personally want to play retro games this way. Don't get me wrong, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. In fact, I know that it's actually better in a lot of ways. Well, the whole reason I got into collecting retro games in the first place is because of all the nostalgia that's attached to playing these games on the original hardware. And yeah, I know that the Classic Edition consoles aren't exactly original hardware, but they are still official, they look nice on display, and the controllers feel great too. They may never be more charming and nostalgic than playing on legitimate hardware, sure, but thanks to all the other benefits involved, this is actually good enough for me. And look, I'm well aware of the fact that you could get unofficial shells for Raspberry Pis that actually look really good, or at the very least look a lot better than playing games off of an endoskeleton anyway. But I don't know, I just kind of feel like mini consoles are the perfect middle ground between convenience and nostalgia. So after getting a hold of the NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, and even PS1 minis, I just didn't see any reason to keep all my digital games from those consoles anymore. So that's why I decided to make an ass load of money and free up a bunch of space at the same time by selling everything off. So naturally, you'd think I'd be eager for the above average size then to hurry up and pump a 64 mini out so I can make room on my shelf for Time Cop DVDs, or since I've said in the past that I'm convinced it's only a matter of time before Nintendo makes a 64 mini that I'd sell all my games off before it's even official like I did with my Genesis collection. But whether it be a year or a decade, I just don't see any way how it's possible that Nintendo could make a 64 Classic Edition that'd be better than playing games on the original 64. I mean, is Nintendo capable of doing it? Of course they are, but I just don't see how they could do it at a price that most people would be willing to pay, so I'm pretty sure they'd have to cut some corners here and there. I mean, let's not forget about how flustered people got when they found out that the PlayStation Mini was going to cost 100 bucks, and that was before anybody really even knew how bad it actually become. I mean, it was still worth paying 20 bucks for after they did the price cut, but while I'd be shocked if Nintendo botched the 64 Mini that hard, I still think it's bound to face a lot of the same issues as the PS1 did, seeing as how they both came from the same console generation. In fact, I think it's actually got a few more issues than the PS1 as far as emulation's concerned. You see, according to this guy Ricky who works at Circuit City sometimes on weeknights, emulating games for the 64 isn't quite as straightforward as it is for other consoles. In fact, it was apparently so much so that when Nintendo put 64 games on the Wii's virtual console, they had to create individual emulators specifically catered to each game, which is why only a handful of them made the transition over. Now, obviously, Nintendo could probably do the same thing for 20 games in the 64 Mini, especially since the NES and Super Nintendo Classic Editions are more powerful than the Wii and 3DS, according to the interwebs. But one of the best parts about owning mini consoles is allegedly breaking the law and adding all your favorite games that, for all kinds of different reasons, were neglected from the original lineup. 
So unless the hardware's got an all-in-one emulator that can play anything, then games just aren't gonna run properly on a 64 Mini. I mean, seeing as some guy got Doom running on a friggin' pregnancy test, then there was a pretty good chance that hackers could probably manage to figure something out. However, since the file sizes of 64 games are a lot bigger than they were on everything up until the 16-bit era, I highly doubt we'd be able to fit all the good ones on a Classic Edition console. Like, for the NES and Super Nintendo Classics, it was probably harder for Nintendo to find storage capacities that couldn't fit the entire libraries on them. But 64 games could be anywhere between 4 and 64 megabytes, which is a lot smaller than the average PS1 game, sure. But if Nintendo uses 512 megabytes of storage for the 64 Classic Edition like they did with the NES and Super Nintendo Classics, then we're probably not going to be able to add very many ROMs on there outside of the ones Nintendo gives us, if any at all. Like, sure, we could probably do the USB gimmick like with the PlayStation Mini, but Nintendo didn't use USB ports for the first two Mini consoles, so I doubt they'd do it with the 64 Mini. And even if they did, uh, something about this just seems bootleg to me. I mean, I do it with my PlayStation Mini, even though I can't find it right now, but while this isn't necessarily a deal-breaker, it definitely loses a lot of points for me. Especially since one of the 64 strong points is all the four-player games it's got, which you couldn't do if there was a bootleg-ass thumb drive hogging up one of the controller ports. And speaking of controllers, look at these things! I mean, it's probably twice the size of what an actual 64 Classic Edition would end up becoming, and the insides are a lot more complicated than an NES and Super Nintendo controller, which is probably why Sony cheaped out and used the original controller for the PlayStation Mini instead of the one with the analog sticks. But since Nintendo doesn't really have a cheaper controller they could use for the 64, they wouldn't really have any choice but to pony up the dough. And that's not even taking the Rumble Pack and all the other gimmicks that'd surely be left out into consideration either, which, to be fair, is a problem with the first two Classic Edition consoles as well. While Mario Paint is pretty cool, most people didn't even know the Super Scope ever existed, and if you do, I bet you probably couldn't even name three games without looking them up right now. While Duck Hunt's pretty nostalgic and everything, it's not really all that fun to play these days outside of like a minute or two. So while I could easily do without games like Hey You Pikachu to use the microphone, it would kinda suck to lose the rumble feature that most games took advantage of, not to mention the games that use the memory cards. Obviously Nintendo could sort all this out, but we all know that they'd want the profit margins to be as high for a 64 Classic Edition as it was for the first two consoles, if they're gonna bother doing one at all. So sorry to say, but I honestly can't see a 64 Mini being cheaper than like 120 bucks. Honestly, I don't even think 120 bucks would be unfair as long as they did it right. But along with all the other issues I mentioned, let's not forget about how awesome it was to have so many different options for colorways on the original 64. Call me a pessimistic buttwagon if you must, but if we get a 64 Classic Edition then, it's probably only gonna be in one color, or at least not as many colors as the original console was anyway. I really hope I'm wrong about that, and I know this might seem like a really big nitpick, but I really do think that one of the best things about the 64 is having different controller options for just about every possible mood. For instance, I use the green controller whenever I feel like wearing a fake mustache. Ha 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 ha! I mean, the Super Nintendo only had two colorways available, and I think everyone could agree that Nintendo chose the superior design, so no issues there. And while the top loader NES is actually pretty cool, I think the NES's original design wins out if we're going for nostalgia. But if you're a badass like me with a Pikachu 64 that's got the cheeks that light up when you turn the power on, then could you really find it in your ass to part ways with this in favor of a mini console that only comes in the standard color along with all the other issues I've talked about? I mean, if a 64 Mini uses the controller ports from the original 64, then we could use any controller we wanted. But then that would mean that we couldn't do the thumb drive gimmick, which I'd imagine is the only way to increase the storage, and if that's the case, then we'd only have a handful of games to choose from. And sure, some would argue that there really aren't that many more than 2064 games that you'd want to play in the modern day, even though some of them are the greatest games of all time. But even though I'm sure Nintendo would probably work a deal out with Microsoft to get games like Banjo-Kazooie and Diddy Kong Racing on there, putting must-haves like No Mercy and Golden would be damn near impossible due to all the licensing issues. So if I can't add ROMs to this thing, then yeah, it would still be pretty cool, sure, but I'd still consider it to be more of a fun little trinket like the Game & Watch and a true replacement for the 64. Hell, I don't even like the 64 that much. I mean, if all the best games weren't ported over to the Switch already, then I'd honestly say that I'd like the Wii U a little bit more. But even so, this console is way too important for any kind of collector to just not have in their collection, and there's still more than enough games that I'll always want to have the option to play whenever I want. And as for the dilemma of playing the original 64 on a smart TV, I recently got the Aeon 64 that lets you play games with HDMI cables. And well, I've gotta say that the games look pretty friggin' great, and I swear to god they're not even paying me to say that. I mean, sure you can't use save states, but you don't really need those for 64 games anyway. And even though some 64 titles are expensive as all hell, you could still add ROMs to an SD card and play them with an EverDrive cartridge, which emulation wouldn't be a problem for since you're still playing the ROMs off of the original hardware. Yeah, 150 bucks for the Aeon HDMI converter is an ass hair pricey, but you could still buy cheaper converters without really losing that much quality, and like I said, I'd be willing to pay more than 120 for a 64 Mini anyway, so I don't really mind ponying up the dough if it means I could avoid dealing with AV cables and keeping my Pikachu console. 
So while I'm sure a 64 Mini would still be worth buying, I'm not gonna be expecting it to be anything beyond the Game & Watch, and I know that's what they're supposed to be, but we all know that like 99% of people only buy these things just to hack them. Which is illegal and you should never do, by the way. So I'm not saying I'm not excited for a 64 Mini since, I'm sure it'll still be pretty cool whenever Nintendo decides to put one out, which I'd imagine will be the next time they have another rainy day and need something that's guaranteed to sell. I'm just not gonna get my hopes up that we're gonna get rumble support, most of the colorway options including the Pikachu design, and most importantly, an unnecessarily large amount of excess storage that we could use to allegedly fit all the best games on there illegally. Which of course we won't do by the way, even though we all totally will. So unless Nintendo makes me look like a dingus by proving me wrong, I'm probably always gonna play 64 games on my original console and pray to the almighty Susan that we get a Game Boy Classic Edition instead. Of course with all the multiple colorways that that thing gave us. But anyway, that's all for today though. If you liked this video then, you might also dig my video talking about why everyone seems to be selling the retro collections off. If you'll excuse me though, I gotta go take my dad back to prison cause he's been acting up quite a bit lately. Later. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty, thank you for your support.